Hello students, in this video we'll see an example of using Gram-Schmidt to find orthogonal polynomials. Let's consider the inner product on the space of polynomials. of degree less than or equal to n. Okay, so a vector space of polynomials degree less than or equal to n. And here's the inner product. I give you two polynomials. I say p and q inner product will be the integral from negative 1 to 1 of p of x times q of x dx. And now, of course, remember that you might say, why is this an inner product? We can check that this is an, indeed an inner product, but the easiest way to think about this is that since this is a Raymond sum, right, it's basically an infinite, infinite version of the standard inner product, right? Because, of course, what will this be? This is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity. The sum, j goes from 1 to n, right? Our starting point's negative 1, so I'm going to have p of negative 1 plus the length of the interval is 2, so I'm going to have a 2j over n. 2j over n, because it's b minus a times j over n, so b minus a over here is that. And then what? And then q of negative 1 plus 2j over n, and then times just 2 over n, right? So that's just a scaling factor over here. So of course, this is exactly the form of a standard inner product, right? Because this, if I forget about the limit for a second over there, then this term inside the limit over there is some function like a sub j, b sub j, with some weights over here that are non-negative weights, just 2 over n's and non-negative weights. So this is, in some sense, a limit of standard ordinary inner products on Rn. OK, great. And so now what I want to do now is I want to consider at least, we'll, let's do a special case with n is equal to 2, right? So consider the basis if n is equal to 2, for example then 1x and x squared is a basis for polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2. Great. Okay. That's uh, trivial because that's just a standard that's just the standard basis. Of course the problem is that this is not an orthog this is not orthogonal basis. This is not orthogonal. Okay, we can make it orthogonal by applying the Gram-Schmidt algorithm, right? So let's apply Gram-Schmidt to this. Okay, so if we apply Gram-Schmidt, what's the procedure for doing this? The procedure for Gram-Schmidt just says we take the first basis function just to be the normalized function over here. So phi 1 is just going to be the function 1 over the length of 1, right? So we just have to compute the length of 1 over here. So what's the length of 1? Well, we're just going to integrate 1 from negative 1 to 1. So here, length of 1 is just going to be the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 1 times 1. Of course, that's the length squared, right? dx. So that's equal to what? That's equal to 2 over here. So we're just going to have a 2. So that says the length of 1 is equal to just uh, the square root of 2. Okay, so our first function over here is just going to be the square root of, so that tells me that phi 1, our first function is just going to be 1 over the square root of 2. Now, typically, when you're talking about the orthogonalization process for this family of functions, we want to get a family called the Legendre polynomials. Legendre polynomials are normalized in a little bit of a different way, so it's not exactly the gram schmidt procedure which gives you the Legendre polynomials, but they're close, they're up to a multiple of the Legendre polynomials, okay? Great. What's phi 2 going to be? So phi 2 is going to be x which is the second function in our set, x minus the projection of x onto the subspace 1 over the square root of 2, right? And so what is that going to be? So that's going to be x minus the inner product of 1 over the square root of 2 with x. And then this is going to be the unnormalized phi, so it's unnormalized. So I'm going to actually change this notation a little bit. Let's change this over here and make that a psi 2, because I want this to be normalized. I'm going to call this psi 2. Psi 2 is going to be this thing over here. It's going to be x minus the projection onto that of this thing in the direction of 1 over the square root of 2. Great. And so what is this inner product over here? This is going to be x minus 1 over root 2, the integral from negative 1 to 1 of just what? Of just 1 over root 2 and then hit that with x. That's that inner product over there, dx. 
Of course, x is an, is an odd function over here, so there's nothing to happen over here. This integral is just going to cancel out because x is odd, right? So that comes from the fact that x is an odd function. So x is odd. So that symmetry saves us there, right? And so that just tells me that psi 2 is just equal to what? Psi 2 is just equal to x. Of course, x is not normalized, so I have to do phi 2 is going to be x. So phi 2 is going to be psi 2 over the length of psi 2. And what's the length of psi 2 squared? The length of psi 2 squared is going to be the integral from negative 1 to 1 of just what? The integral from negative 1 to 1 of just x. But that x uh, squared, of course, right? So x squared. The x not an even function, so that's just going to be 2, the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared dx. And so that's going to be 2 thirds, 2 thirds. And so that says that the norm of psi 2, psi 2, is going to be uh, the square root of 2 over 3, root 2 over 3. <laughs> Excellent. All right. And so that gives me what my phi 2 is. My phi 2 is going to be x divided by this thing, so it's going to be root 3 over 2, root 3 over 2, x. Okay, great. That's what my phi 2 is. And then finally, what's the phi 3, what's the um, psi 3 going to be? So psi 3 over here, so psi 3 is going to be the second function x squared minus the projection onto the subspace generated by phi 2, phi 2 hat of x squared minus the projection onto 1 over the square root of 2 of x squared. Okay, great. So I just subtract off those projections. And so what's the key thing to observe over here? This is just going to be x squared, right? x squared. And then, of course, let's look at the projection of um, what's this inner product going to give me over here? This term over here is going to be phi 2. Well, phi 2 is proportional to x, right? So I do the projection is going to be an x in the integral over here. So we're going to have an x. So over here, if we write the projection over here, so recall that projection. So if I did that over here, if I looked at phi 2 hat with x squared, we would get the integral from negative 1 to 1 of what? Of root 3 over 2? x times x squared dx. But again, that's an odd function. That's x cubed, so that's going to give me 0. So this projection is actually gone over here. There's no direct. There's nothing in the direction of x. And the projection of x squared onto this thing over here, well, it's the inner product of x squared with this thing. Let's figure it out. So this is going to be minus, minus what? Minus the integral minus 1 over root 2. And the integral from negative 1 to 1, that's the basis function of what? Of just x squared with that function of, one over, of, of phi 2, which is just that phi 1, which is just 1 over root 2, 1 over square root of 2 dx. Okay, great. And so that's going to be an x squared, x squared minus 1 half. And then integrating x squared from 1 to 1, I'm going to put a plus over here times 2, the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared dx, which is just a third. So it's going to be x squared minus a third. And now all we have to do is we have to divide this function. So phi 2, so psi 3, phi 3, phi 3 hat is going to be psi 3, which we just found over here, x squared over 1 third. And then I have to find the length of that thing, which is a calculation we'll leave to everyone else. Divide by the length of uh, the length of psi 3. That will normalize it. And so these vectors over here, these polynomials over here, phi 1, phi 2, and phi 3 are multiples of the Legendre polynomials. So that's just an important note. So note that the set phi 1 hat, phi 2 hat, phi 3 hat, are multiples of the Legendre polynomial. So the Legendre polynomials are also orthogonal polynomials, but they're not normalized. So we'll, we'll discuss how we can form, construct the Legendre polynomials of degree less than or equal to n in a further a video by using Rodriguez formulas and differential equations, which generate it from this inner product over here using certain weights on inner product spaces. We'll see how to generate the full class of Legendre polynomials, derive the Rodriguez formula, the recursion relationships, the differential equations, and study the singularity structure of second, or second type Legendre functions. Thank you very much.